Jennifer Rooks, and this is Main Watch. After the repeal of the same-sex marriage law in 2009, a lot of people wondered how long advocates would wait until they tried again. Just a couple weeks ago, they ended the speculation. Heartened by the passage of a similar bill in New York, Equality Maine announced it would try for a referendum that could end up on the ballot in 2012. Like New York and New Hampshire and Vermont and Massachusetts and Connecticut and Iowa and Washington, D.C., we are committed to winning marriage equality in the wonderful state of Maine. Maine's families and communities. It is good for our state, and it is good for our gay and lesbian citizens and their children. Gay and lesbian families in Maine need and deserve marriage. And joining me now to discuss the referendum campaign, Tim Deal, who is president of the Board of Equality Maine, and Carol Conley, the executive director of the Christian Civic League. I want to thank you both for being here on Maine Watch. Thank you. you know, I want to start before we discuss whether public opinion has changed or the strategy behind this campaign, with having you each give me sort of your basic moral argument, I'm going to ask you, Tim, why does Maine need a same-sex marriage law? And um, Carol, what's wrong with one? And so why don't, Tim, you, you start? Well, uh, like any couple that wants to, to affirm its uh, love and commitment to each other, uh, same-gender couples look to have that public declaration of their commitment to each other for a lifetime. And marriage provides that opportunity. It also brings with it a series of rights and responsibilities that are also important in establishing and strengthening the family unit. And we believe that all Mainers should have access to the institution of marriage so that Maine families can be strengthened. There are children and couples that are functioning as families today that have been functioning this way for decades in the state. And so the recognition of these couples by the state is critical to support their ongoing uh, rearing of children and the stability of the family unit in the state. All right, and Carol, in your view, what's wrong with allowing couples, same-sex couples, to marry under law in Maine? And I would probably reframe the question as far as what's wrong with same-sex marriage is what is the definition of marriage? And that's, that goes to the heart. Uh, what is marriage? And for us, traditionally, uh, in the United States and for thousands of years, it's been between one man and one woman. I think we all agree that marriage benefits a society and when we talk about children being raised, uh, there's studies that show many, many times that children that are in a family with a man and woman, a mother and a father, are much less likely to be involved in crime, to go to prison, to graduate from high school, to go to college, not to be involved in uh, alcohol abuse and so on. So there's no question about the benefit of marriage. Now we're talking about the definition of marriage. We believe that the best protection for that unit, the family unit, is what has worked for thousands of years is between a man and a woman. Okay, so let's talk about the polls. In 2009, advocates of same-sex marriage lost. They were, the, the, the law was repealed and the margin was 53 to 47 percent, which was a larger margin than the polls had shown. Now, having said that, just this May, Gallup released findings of a new national poll showing a big shift the other way. It asked the question, do you think marriages between same-sex couples should or should not be recognized by the law as valid with the same rights as traditional marriage? Should be 53 percent, should not be 45 percent. Tim, how does Equality Maine's internal polling reflect that national polling? How does your polling for Maine, because that Gallup right, poll was exactly. a national poll, reflect? Is it similar to that number? Absolutely, it's almost identical to that. In fact, um, we've had several polls conducted that show 53% support now in Maine for marriage equality um, for same-gender couples. What were the internal polls showing in 2009? They were showing 47% uh, 47 47 support at the beginning of the campaign, and that's actually where we ended the campaign, mm. as you know, at the, at the ballot. So um, we're very committed to only going to the voters if we believe we can win. And we know that that is only going to happen if we have conversations with tens of thousands of Mainers over the next nine to 12 months. Okay, and I wanna talk about strategy in just a little bit, but I wanna to get to Carol and to ask you, does the Christian Civic League also have internal polling? And if so, is it different than what Equality Maine's polling is showing? Well, the Christian Civic League, of course, is 
part of a much broader coalition than that, and, and we have met, but we don't have an internal polling in that regard. Um, I would note that in 2009 and, and leading up to that, there were polls that clearly showed that there were higher and, and reasons to believe that that vote was going to pass rather than be repealed. As you know with polls, we grab the polls that we like, and especially with internal polling, and we all do that, and it, there's no question about that. There, there, there is going to be a long discussion, but for us, when we look back, when we talk about polls, this has gone to people 31 different times uh, across the United States. All 31 times, people have said no to this redefinition of marriage. And uh, when you start talking about polls, it's tricky because you're talking about registered voters, people likely to vote, and so on. But um, I understand why folks that may be on the other side of this issue would be emboldened by some of those polls. Tim, let me ask you about this. The, the gap between what polls were showing at the end of the referendum campaign and how it turned out in the end, mm -hmm. I know was very disappointing mm -hmm. for Equality Maine and, and people who support your side. And, and a lot of talk was given about how people might have said one thing in the polls, but Mm -hmm. maybe been embarrassed to admit mm -hmm. their opposition to a pollster on a phone right. but then voted differently in the um, you know in the ballot booth do you think that the same thing is is still likely to happen I mean how big of a spread do you believe you need to counteract that phenomenon if it's true yes I mean certainly uh, there there is a convenience factor to answering a question in a poll that may not reflect your re reality when you go into the ballot box uh, in all cases, but we're confident that the kinds of conversations we're having now with people that are really about getting at the underlying reasons why they don't feel they can support marriage equality are helping us to identify bo voters positively that are moving into support. And as we're having these conversations, we're going door to door literally across the state of Maine from the coast all the way up to Bangor. And we're having these conversations and what we're finding is that nearly a quarter of the time when engaging in a conversation with a friend, a neighbor, a colleague, or somebody who comes to provoke a conversation, almost a quarter of the people are saying, you know what, I hadn't thought about it that way. I understand why this is important. I have gay and lesbian colleagues. I have gay and lesbian family members. And I can appreciate why they would deserve the same recognition as I have. So it, we've sort of shifted a discussion about how possibly the strategy might be um, a little different this time around than last time. You're talking about this intensive door-to-door -door campaigning. Mm -hmm. And Carol, let me ask you, will the, the tenor of the campaign be different this time around? Well, I wasn't really involved in the KIPP campaign last time, as we were just talking uh, before off-air, that I've been at this one year and one day now at the Christian Civic League. Uh, I think it's important that the tenor be absolutely respectful. Um, and I, w neither Tim nor I can speak for and control everybody else in regard to what their motivations are and how they conduct themselves. But for those people that we are responsible, I, I want to take the opportunity tonight to say we pledge uh, to deal with this respectfully. Um, you know, as far as the Christian Civic League, and not everybody that's in this um, in, in regard to this campaign that's coming up, it's coming from a moral point of view or a religious point of view. But for those of us that, you know, has the name Christian attached to it, uh, we have the idea of uh, Imago Deo, uh, whether it's you or Tim or myself, that I am commanded to respect and to love that individual because of the image of God that's on them. And we will, we're taking that pledge today uh, that we will not interact in a way that is, and be accountable to the media or anybody else if they hear something that sounds that you're trying to, you know, froth up the, your supporters or just try to get people involved in emotion or passion or those things because certainly I think extremes on both sides of that uh, certainly surfaced in the last time. It's interesting you say that though because, you know, we all know, you know, I'll use the analogy of the, the negative campaigning, you know, mm -hmm. everybody pledges they're not going to do it but then it's what works, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, it, can you fire up the base without sort of? Well, if you're talking about fire up the base, I don't like that language because, again, that talks about passion. Engage people, I hope we can. I mean, that's what we're both trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to have those conversations. I think it's interesting you use the language that people might have been embarrassed. Uh, I think that clearly on both sides, uh, in our side, uh, using language that was absolutely inappropriate and, and uh, uh, demeaning. Uh, it is not appropriate. And 
to assume that someone that takes the position that is defending uh, the traditional view of marriage is automatically considered a bigot or a hater, as the term that's used a lot. Um, it, it makes it very difficult to talk to people without those emotions and those passions really allowing us to make a, a good decision.